Are you lacking physically? <laughs> Have you fallen short spiritually? <laughs> How mentally tough are you? Would you like to have a social life? I would. You would? Well, if you answered yes to any of these I have a thing for you. Cubbies. <laughs> Cubby saw sharpener is top of the line, and I guarantee it will sharpen your saw. <laughs> Saw sharpen or 729-742-7736 to get it now. Cubby Soft Sharpen is not responsible for any injuries. Please, must be 18 years or older to call. My name is Rachel, and my name is Kayla. And today we'll be talking about Cubby 7 habit, which is sharpening the saw. So what is sharpening the saw? Well, it's the renewal of four dimensions, which Cubby describes as physical, spiritual, mental, and social, social and emotional dimensions. We think that Cubby explains it really well when he writes, this is the habit that makes other habits possible. It preserves and enhances the greatest asset you have, you. Yeah, and the first dimension he talks about is the physical dimension, which would be caring effectively for your body, um, eating healthy, make sure you get enough sleep, also exercising. Um, and on that note, we have a lot of people in here that are on teams like cross country and track. We have soccer, tennis, um, swim, and we also have dance. So a lot of that we already cover on what we do. Uh, it's important that we take good care of our bodies because we'll find that we have more energy and we'll genuinely feel better. So with that being said, it's important to not overdo it, which could be something that a lot of the people in this room are to, being that a lot of us are on a team. Yeah, so we are trying to sharpen the saw, but not kill it. <laughs> the second habit is the spiritual habit. The second dimension is the spiritual dimension. And for me, this was the dimension that I related the most with. Uh, but according to Covey, this is your core, your commitment to your value system. It's really what makes you, you. And it's probably the most private of the dimensions. Um, he talks about one of the most ethical practices from the previous habits, or this dimension being the personal mission statement. And Covey believes that this is an important aspect of the spiritual dimension, but it represents a quadrant two activity, which means we aren't likely to put priority on developing our mission statement and really making sure that we're spiritually renewing ourselves each day. And so just to encourage you, one thing, that Mariah from the Dallas Bullard Center tells the spiritual formation coordinators each year is to look to Jesus as an example for spiritual renewal. The Bible provides many examples of Jesus going away in time of solitude and prayer before going out and meeting the needs of others. So in the same way, we should be prioritizing our daily spiritual renewal. One, of the great, one great way to do this is through the serenity prayer, which Michaela and I were talking about last night. Uh, really just reminds us of what Covey talks about regarding change. So for those of you who aren't familiar with the prayer, it says, God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. That being said, it's important to know that the spiritual dimension isn't just limited to prayer. Uh, you can spiritually renew through a variety of ways, including in spending time in nature, journaling, listening to music, reading a good, thoughtful book. I like to think of it as anything that draws me closer to God. So for me, that would mean going to the beach by myself and just enjoying listening to the waves and being out in the sun. Yeah. Off of that, I also find the meal from going to the beach. The next dimension that Covey talks about is the mental dimension. And for most of us, that comes from a formal education, which luckily we're still in. Uh, for some of us, we might be graduating in as close as two months, some of us is another year. So what does that look like for us? And it's important to keep that in mind, to think about how we can renew our mind even after we're out of college. Covey talks about reading quality literature as a way to do that, and even some TV shows can be a good example of renewing your mind, but we have to be wise. <coughs> Writing can also be a really good way, like keeping a journal. Uh, a, a warning that Covey gives us about 
TV though and other types of things that could be a time waster to think about just what a lot of us spend our time on. And I think an uh, appropriate thing would also be to include social media, how that um, influences us. A quote I liked that he mentioned was the person who doesn't read is no better off than the person who can't read. And that just made me think about it because a lot of us will just say, oh, well, we have 70 pages to do for this class, but it's a blessing to be able to do what we do. So organizing and planning both activities can help us bring you mentally, and these are also examples of habit two and habit three. And Coach Moore kind of talked about this earlier, but these first three dimensions largely depend on habits one, two, and three, and the fourth dimension incorporates habits four, five, and six. So the fourth dimension is the social and emotional dimension, and unlike the other dimensions, which require us to plan time for renewal, our social and emotional dimension can be renewed in our interactions with people throughout the day. So this requires us to intentionally engage with habits four, five, and six, which, just to remind you, are thinking win-win in situations with other people, seeking first to understand others, and then synergizing or working together to solve problems. When we empathically listen to others, seek solutions that benefit both parties, and collaborate with others, we are renewing our social and emotional dimension. This dimension is focused on interpersonal leadership, empathic communication, and creative cooperation. So the next thing we're going to do is, if you haven't already seen it, on our second sheet, we have a checklist that we're going to go through. So we've created this checklist that encompasses each aspect of what Cubby goes over in Habit 7. So when going through the checklist, try to be honest with yourself on what your gut response would be. Uh, if you're stuck on something, don't take too long, just try to go through it naturally. There's no shame in these answers, and they're intended just to help you grow. So does anyone have any clarifying questions before we start? Cool, we're going to do about a minute and a half to do this. about 10 more seconds because some of you guys just want to shoot up. Okay, cool. Now that we've done this activity, we're going to take it one step further with some round of questions. Uh, these are intended to help you further identify what you may need to work on. When we're going through these questions, feel free to jot something down if you have a thought. So, first one. Remember a time when you were truly happy? What did it feel like? How can you feel that way again? How can you strengthen a relationship with a significant other? <clears throat> what can you do less of? What can you do more of? What inspires you? Would anyone like to share any of the things on their list that maybe they didn't check, or maybe ones that they did, or any thoughts or comments on the questions that I just asked you? Yeah. Um, for me, <coughs> for me I, put, I didn't mark I read books and other publications regularly. If it's not really forced upon <coughs> within like in the classroom setting, um, I don't choose to read books as a hobby. Um, Probably because lack of education I got when I was younger, and I uh, filled that void with either 
with video games or just being outside and playing. So that's something that's been really hard on me is reading just for fun. Mm -hmm. um, so that's something I want to like to check off. Thank you for sharing that. Does anyone else want to make a comment on the questions or checklist? Yeah. Um, I realize that as a kin major, I have the least in the physical checklist, but then as a video gamer, I have the most in the social and emotional checklist. So I found that kind of weird. <laughs> I think that's pretty normal to feel like one dimension is really heavy and one is lacking. So the goal is to be aware of that, like looking at your checklist now and seeing what you can do to make some changes. Uh, I just wanted, when you were talking about thinking back to a time when you were happy, it was actually the last, not last summer, but no, it, was, it was last summer. Um, there was a period of time where I was trying to decide how I was going to move forward in life. I was deciding whether I wanted to come back to Westmont or whether I wanted to pursue something else. And even though there's a lot of things up in the air and things that were unknown, I was the happiest because I live in a place where I, God had the most freedom to direct me and I wasn't necessarily attached to one or more of the other white knuckling anything. There was complete freedom. I really had nothing going for myself. But there was complete freedom for him to work and move. And that actually felt very free. That's really cool. When you were saying that, I actually thought I got chills. So <laughs> I just wanted to tell you. So, personally for me, I noticed that something that I could work on is creating, I never created a vision statement, and I thought about that in my vision and purpose of life, and that's something that just stuck out to me, because I really am trying to look for guidance in this time of my life, and I think that could help me realize what I need to put my energy in quadrant one versus quadrant two type thinking, so it's something that I really want to actually pursue. Yeah. And I think for me, I really need to work on resting and relaxing. That's the biggest struggle that I have, especially at Westmont. And going um, from class to track practice and not really taking the time that my body needs to just decompress after a long day. So to conclude, all four dimensions ideally should be balanced. Um, but the good news is that because they're interrelated, there will be overlap. So when you are sharpening one dimension, you are also working to sharpen, start sharpen the other dimensions. The most, important time, the most important thing is just taking the time to do it and really treating it as a quadrant one activity and giving it priority in your life. Um, another benefit is that we can use what we learned in Habit 6 and synergize the activities. So, for example, you can listen to a podcast while you work out. This would renew your body mentally and physically at the same time. Or you can attend a campus lecture with a friend, which would be developing your mental dimension as well as your social-emotional dimension. At the end of the chapter, Cubby really stressed the idea of the upward spiral. So, with that, it, he wanted to emphasize learn, commit, do. Learn, commit, do. And that was something that really stuck with me, because a lot of times I feel like I'll get to like, this block that I've been having. And I'll think, okay, it's time to rest, but no, I should be constantly trying to grow. <coughs> so, so he mentions that we always reap what we sow, no more, no less. With that in mind, we pass that as sticky note, which will be on your desk. We'd like to encourage you to spend some time this week renewing. And if you want to be more specific with how you can do that, pick an activity from our checklist. And, or make one your own and write it down on a sticky note and put it somewhere that you'll see it throughout the week where you can reflect on it. So for me, I put my sticky note on in here when I get ready in the morning. So just a reminder for you, just sharpen your saw. Thank you guys.